name is Diana de Rosario and I serve as the assistant provost at College of DuPage. In mid-March, as we were informed that we needed to move to remote learning to protect our students, our faculty, and our staff, we became aware that our students uh, who were most vulnerable needed some support from the institution. We acted quickly and were able to provide laptops to students who needed technology support and distributed the food from our food pantry to those who were uh, in need of support for food. Soon after, we heard from students that they were struggling to manage uh, being in a remote environment, becoming caregivers. Some of them were losing their jobs. Many of them working in the service industry, being restaurants, um, hospitality, or any environment such as retail created a major impact on our population. The COVID relief fund was something that the college established quickly to be able to distribute funds in a seamless way and as fast as possible to students who are in need. We are very appreciative to those that have donated and that continue to contribute to the fund. Hi, my name is Karen Kuhn. I'm the executive director of the College of DuPage Foundation. We've heard of a variety of needs from the college, um, particularly as it comes to our students, and we've jumped into action um, relatively quickly. And we've had an outpouring of support from our community um, for the COVID-19 Student Relief Fund. And this fund is really to help students with their essential needs. We've heard from over 200 students to date asking for things as simple as um, food to feed themselves and their families, um, both aging parents and young children at home, diapers, help with utility bills to keep the lights on, and even tuition because their desire to persevere and find optimism in all that's happening has continued. The community has really come together just from the donors um, who've included alumni and faculty and staff. Um, everyone has stepped up. We've had a matching gift from the Shebik family of Wheaton that we're so grateful for, but there's so much more to do and so many more students to help. We, but we were getting good feedback. Um, our first batch of students received awards over the last week, and we've gotten emails just sharing the impact it has. And one this morning specifically said, you know, I'm so grateful for, for your help and for providing some hope, and this has really saved my family's life. If anyone um, is inspired to give, we are still taking donations. They can visit our website at foundation.cod.edu backslash COVID. Any dollar amount will help, and I know many students will appreciate and benefit from your support. So we hope everyone stays healthy and continues to be kind to one another and um, that we get through this together. I had done two semesters at College of DuPage, and when I turned 20, I actually had a life-changing injury. I had sustained a spinal cord injury, and so ended up coming back to College of DuPage in 1997 as a disabled student. I really didn't know what to expect, um, how much I'd be able to do in school, and I was so surprised to find that the college was so accommodating. They had their own department for students with disabilities, and they really met me halfway with figuring out how to do things. One of the teachers that really sticks out in my mind is Jennifer Harris. Essentially, she was my first professor uh, helping me learn to paint 
as a person who painted with their mouth. Now this is no small challenge, especially Jennifer had no experience with students like me, but she met me as a person and treated me like any other student and had expectations of me as any other student, and that was important. I didn't even have expectations of myself that were very high, and the fact that she had such high expectations of me helped me understand that I was equal to every student, and I had to work as hard as every other student, and that that was an important lesson at the time. The last few years of my art have been about challenging myself to new mediums and techniques. I stayed away from portraits for years, but I always was intrigued by them. So I myself attempted portraiture maybe just three or four years ago and I found out that I had a knack for it. It's been very satisfying. I've had a bit of success and recognition through my portraits. Um, people like Pierce Brosnan have reached out to me. Kathy Lee Gifford, um, George Takai. People think what I do is interesting. They think the fact that I paint with my mouth sets me apart from other artists. And I'm okay with that. I do like my work to stand for itself, but I think a lot of people um, find value and interest in the way that I create my paintings. When people say inspire others, so many times people with disabilities are over sentimentalized. You know, it's all a story about tragedy and doing things in spite of something else. But what I really hope is that when people see or hear about my story is that they see a person with a disability who is just doing things. You know, we're everyday people. We are just like anyone else. We have aspirations and dreams and hopes. And I, I really just hope that I'm seen as a person doing what they love to do and chasing their dream. College of DuPage wants you to succeed both inside the classroom and out. Your studies are important, no doubt. So is discovering yourself by meeting people, making new friends, getting involved, and having fun. Oh, hey, Chappie. We've got you covered on both ends with plenty of resources to help make the most of your time. And have an awesome college experience. Being a well-rounded student, like anything else, is a healthy balance between work and play. When it's time to be serious about your work, our library is stocked with everything you need plus comfortable spaces for individual and group study. Need a little extra help with your homework? The Learning Commons offers assistance in math, writing, reading, and speech, as well as options for tutoring and preparing for placement exams. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sunshine Valentine, and I'm one of the counselors at the College of DuPage. I wanted to give you a few tips for managing anxiety. I know this time, we're all dealing with COVID-19 in different ways, and that can be very, very stressful. But we wanted to let you know that there are some things that you can do while you're at home to help. So number one, you're not alone. So there are a variety of community resources that you can find at the link on your screen. You can contact us for referrals at our office, 630-942-2259. So if you feel that you are having an emergency and you really need help, there will be someone there to speak with you right away. The DuPage Crisis Hotline Center is open 24 seven. So whenever you need someone, they are there. You can call that number at 630-627-1700. You can speak with a licensed mental health professional. You can also text the crisis line and you can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is send a text message to 741741. So the second tip for managing anxiety is to take a break from watching all of the news stories, um, watching the memes on 
social media, watching all of the drama and all of the depression around us. Um, we want to stay in the know. We want to know what's going on, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming and it can lead to more anxiety. So know when enough is enough and know when to take a break. Number three, and most importantly, please connect with other people. We're all in this together. And although it can feel like you're alone, you're really not. If no one calls you, take the time to check in on someone else. You can use all of the technology that we have at our fingertips, like Zoom or FaceTime or Skype, any of those things to just reach out and check on someone. All of us need to connect to each other in this time and let each other know that we care and we're there. Number four is to take care of you. Take care of your mind and body. Don't forget to eat well, exercise. Remember to take deep breaths and relax during the day. If you don't remember to do that, a lot of us have apps and smartwatches that can set a reminder to help you do that. So remember to give yourself some time to unwind, do some activities that you like to do, start a new habit, something that you are interested in. Um, when you're feeling down, these are things that can lift your spirits. And most importantly, don't forget to have kindness and compassion for yourself and for others, because we're all going through challenging times and we all deal with stress differently. Step number five is focus on what you can control. So many things are happening now that are beyond our control, but you can't get yourself overwhelmed and worrying about all of those things. It's only going to heighten your anxiety. So focus on what you can do. What can you do to stay healthy? One of the things that you can do is help other people and reach out to others. Um, it's simple as washing your hands and staying home and practicing social distance. That's something that you're already doing that can help others and can lessen anxieties. So don't forget that the little things do count. So those are five tips that we think can help you in this very, very difficult time in managing stress and anxiety. Please don't forget that the counselors are here. We're here for you now, like we've been here for you before. to tell you how College of DuPage fits into your plans, your life. First of all, who are we? <laughs> college of DuPage is a community college serving most of DuPage County, as well as portions of Will and Cook Counties. There are 48 communities in our district, but students come from all over, even internationally. Each semester, there are about 30,000 students enrolled at College of DuPage, making us the second largest provider of higher education in the state. Don't worry about getting lost in the numbers, though. Unlike other large institutions, the average class size is still small, and students really appreciate the one-on-one -on -one personal attention from their instructors.
Whether you're planning on transferring to a four-year institution, studying to earn a degree or certificate for a specific career, sharpening job skills, or taking classes just for fun, College of DuPage truly has something for everyone. And it happens here. The main campus is amazing. If you haven't walked around yet, make a point. That's a must do. College of DuPage has been working hard to make its campus the place to be with many brand new buildings and upgraded facilities, state-of-the-art instructional centers for health sciences, culinary and hospitality, technical fields, computing, and homeland security are all equipped with the latest technology for specialized education and careers. Hi, I'm Remick Enzweiler, Prairie Manager at College of DuPage, and I'm here to talk about some spring planting tips that you can try at home. First order of business is to find a container to plant the plants in. Because you're at home, you know, why not just use some leftover Tupperware? Because it doesn't have any ventilation here, I'd say that you have to poke some holes in the bottom so that the water can get through. So just take any old knife here and just very carefully, obviously, um, poke some holes in it. All right, so that's probably good enough. I got five decent holes in there. So then you want to put your planting medium or what you put the plants in. Your typical potting mix here, uh, and that works just fine. Uh, we in the biology department, we like to add some amendments to uh, sand, perlite, and vermiculite. So what I do next is I put the soil into the plant. And you want to fill it up, but you don't. You want to leave a little room. Once you have mostly filled it, you want to kind of flatten it out a bit and take your seed, and we just spread a thin layer of the seed on top. We don't want to have too much of the seed, but we definitely want to try to cover as much as possible of the seed. So once we've done that, you can either take your scoop or your hand and just do another thin layer of soil. So once you do that, you're almost done. All you got to do is add your mulch. You can use any type of plant material, really, but you, you want it to be thin. So the mulch that you buy at the store to put on a playground, that's maybe a little too thick. This hay was donated to us, so we use straw or hay. And then the last step that we need to do is water it. Water it to a point where it's fully saturated and maybe even starts to percolate through the bottom. And once you start getting drips, you're good to go. So now just keep it saturated every day, water it every day. Uh, before you start to see little plants come up. Student athletes enjoy a winning tradition at College of DuPage with one of the most successful community college athletic programs in the nation. The Mackinac Arts Center is not only home to students studying the arts, but it's also the place to catch a performance. There's theater, music, dance, art galleries, and more. If exercising and staying in shape is a part of your routine, check out Chaparral Fitness in the Physical Education Center with free memberships for full-time students. COD is not a place where you have to just go to class and then go home. And seriously, who would want to? and welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. I'm here with one of our students in the program, Brian Uribe, and we're going to be making ham, cheese, green olive, and egg empanadas. A very nice, very fast, very simple appetizer, but it tastes really, really good because you're basically manufacturing it from scratch. Now, we're going to use today for this pre-made puff pastry that I bought at the store. If you want to make this yourself, you can, not a problem. I think it's a little bit easier to just buy it at the store, especially if you're working uh, for a party and you got a lot of th stuff to do and it's like, man, I just don't have time to make my own puff pastry from scratch. So this recipe, we're going to start by mixing the cheese, cheddar cheese. We've got some chopped ham. We have got chopped green olives. If you want to use the green olives with or without the little pimento inside, either one is totally fine, up to you and our chopped, hard-cooked, boiled egg. So Brian is gonna stir all this up, 
and as he's stirring, I am going to start cutting circles with a cookie cutter out of the puff pastry. Now, I like to get as much usage as I can out of the puff pastry because it's expensive. And so I'm going to make sure I cut right next to each other, the little cuts, to get maximum usage. All right. So I'm going to do a smooth cookie cutter on one side, and then we're going to do a crinkle cookie cutter on the other side so you can see the difference. All right, so we got about seven. Now, I'm doing the classic traditional round empanada shape. If you want to take this dough and go ahead and make squares out of it, and they just won't be, you know, the classic shape, not a problem at all. You can make this any shape you want. It really doesn't matter at all. So now we've got our smooth ones, and now we're going to take our crinkle cookie cutter, and now we're going to cut these out with this other one. So you can see the difference. They'll look slightly different at the end. So if you have a square cookie cutter, use that. If you have a round cookie cutter, use that. If you've got an alligator shaped cookie cutter, use that. It doesn't really matter. Anything, really. It'll be great. As long as you seal everything inside and use some egg wash, everything will be good to go. All right. So we've got this ready to go. All right, so now Brian and I are going to take these and we're going to shape them. So I'll show you the first one here. So we're going to take the filling and we're going to put some in the middle. All right, now here's what I recommend. I recommend putting the filling in and then a little egg wash around it, okay? And you're only going to do half. If you wanted to put the egg wash on first, that is totally acceptable to really. Either way, it doesn't matter. So you're just going to put the egg wash on, just like this, all right? And then you're going to fold it over because the egg is going to act as glue and hold it all together. And then you're going to take a fork and you're going to crimp the edges. Now, if you don't crimp the edges and you press really, really hard, it'll probably work just fine. But I like to crimp the edges because it gives you a little insurance and it really, really, really makes those edges stick together really well. Because if it opens up, they won't look as pretty. So then we're going to take these and we're going to transfer them to the pan. And then we're going to egg wash the tops of all of them. And we're going to bake them at about 400, 425 degrees for about 15 minutes until they're a deep golden brown. Now, if you wanted to use the same egg wash on top and the middle, fine. If you wanted to use an egg yolk on the top of the middle, that's fine. Egg white, any of those will work just great. Okay, all right, so here we go. So I'll start putting some in here and Brian can start crimping them along with me. And then we'll get them all on the pan and we'll get them in the oven. All right, these look great. So remember, the egg wash is your glue. It's going to hold it all together. Okay, so one of the nice things about a recipe like this is if you wanted to use just cheese, it'll work great. If you wanted to use all meat, it'll work great. If you pretty much wanted to put anything at all in the middle of this recipe, it'll work fantastic. It's a very, very versatile recipe, and you can do almost anything on the inside that you want. Also, another thing I'd like to recommend is a sauce. If you'd like to serve these with some salsa, that'll be great. If you'd like to serve these with some guacamole, that would be excellent. If you'd like to serve these with some sour cream, that would be great. If you'd like to make some cheese sauce, that would also work. So the nice thing about this recipe is you can almost do pretty much anything you want with it, serve it with almost anything, and it'll go very, very nicely. Okay, here's our last step. So now we need to egg wash the tops of these so that they bake up with a very nice, beautiful shine and a golden, golden color. So Brian here is going to take the egg wash and he's going to do that on every single one. And then last but not least, I am going to take the fork and put one hole in the center of each one of these. So what I found over the years is if you do this, it allows the steam to escape and they won't explode. 
Sometimes they have a tendency because they're sealed so well that they create a steam pocket and the, and the edge kind of blows out. And then they don't look really, really pretty. So this will give us a little insurance that they should look really perfect. So just one poke right in the middle and then the egg wash and then right in the oven. So again, remember about 400 degrees, 425 for about 15 minutes. When they're a nice golden brown, they're done about 15 minutes. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Excellent work. All right, so now we're going to bake these in the oven. Welcome back. Our empanadas are out of the oven. And again, they baked about 20 minutes or so. You can see they're a beautiful golden brown. And now, of course, it's the best time. You've got to taste them and make sure they're good. So again, thank you so much for coming to uh, this episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. Today was the ham, olive, cheese, and egg empanadas. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and thanks and have a great day. Take care. For more information about culinary arts courses, degrees, and certificates, as well as other hospitality management program offerings, visit their pages on the web at cod.edu.